you'll be disappointed to see that it's uh, myself this week, uh, not Nathan. It's last Sunday of the month, so it's uh, my turn. To, uh, people that know me will know that I am not a thespian or a literary geek. But I have found a few Shakespearean quotes that can be pulled out at the right time and make a great mic drop moment. My favourite, exit stage left, pursued by a bear, of course, but a close second is, what's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name smells as sweet. What's the meaning behind this quote? Well, what we call something does not change the essential essence of what that thing is. There are truths in this world that cannot be altered by the words of people. You will find people in this world who have taken the place of being a Christian, but upon closer inspection seem very far from agreeing with the teachings of Christ as found in the Bible. So today, I want to look at what the Bible says a Christian is. There is a, a rule in Bible study called the law of first mention. Basically, the first time you read a word or see a word, it effectively defines it for the rest of the Bible. The first time that we have people being referred to as Christians is in Acts 11 and uh, verse 26. And it says there, And in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. It's in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. So what does Christian mean? Well, it comes from a Greek word, Christianos, and it means a follower of Christ. And you can see that from Acts. It's the disciples, the followers of Jesus, were first called Christians. So being a Christian is a follower of Christ. But we can see that the Bible uh, says that not everybody that calls himself a Christian is a Christian. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Not everyone who claims that Jesus is their Lord or Master will be considered one by Jesus. Not everyone who calls himself a Christian will be considered one by Jesus. So we must be certain that we match what the Bible's description of a Christian is. So firstly, I want to look at what does not make a Christian. And this is very important because this will dispel some myths. First of all, going to church does not make you a Christian. Going to church is a good thing to do, and I would actively encourage people to go to a church, but that in and of itself does not make a person a Christian. Being born in a Christian country does not make you a Christian. Being born into a family that has Christians in it, perhaps a mum or a dad, a grandfather or a grandmother, that doesn't make you a Christian. Being baptised or confirmed or any other religious ceremony that you can think of that has to do with Christianity, it doesn't in and of itself make you a Christian. Going on a pilgrimage, it's not going to make you a Christian. Doing good deeds in the name of Jesus, and we can see that from our passage that I just quoted there, that's not going to make you a Christian. So what does make you a Christian? Well, there's a few things that we need to think about here. We could look at Romans chapter 3, in verse 23, it says there, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
we have to recognise that we have done wrong. And that is very much a, a, one of the first steps of becoming a Christian, is recognising that we, not as a people, but as an individual, you and I, have done things that are wrong. We might not have done the same wrong things as other people. You might say, well, I'm not a murderer. You might not be a murderer, but you might be a liar. You might be adulterous. You might be somebody that covets after things that other people have. It might be a jealous person. You don't have to have done all the evils in the world to have sinned. You just have to have done one evil. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10 says, For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. We have to acknowledge that there's nothing we can do for ourselves. Okay, we cannot rely on the works of the law. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So what do I learn from that? Well, we have to ask God to forgive us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we have to ask God to forgive us. Why? Because of what Jesus did on the cross. He died for us. So we have to recognize that we've done wrong. We have to acknowledge that there's nothing that we can do to save ourselves. We have to ask God to forgive us because of what Jesus did on the cross. And finally, and most importantly, we have to trust that he will. When looking at one of the great biblical figures in the past, a man called Abraham, it says of him in Genesis 15 and verse 6 that he believed the Lord and he, and he, that is God, counted it to him as righteousness. It is the trust that is the key point. There's no good acknowledging that you've done something wrong and acknowledging there's nothing you could do about it yourself. You have to trust that when you ask God to forgive you, he will. And not trust that you have to do something yourself on top of that. Not going to church, doing pilgrimages or good deeds. It is God's work to save. We have to trust that he will. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook or subscribe on to our YouTube channel, the Ammonville Gospel Hall. The next week it will be Nathan again. However, it will not be the usual format of live uh, stream. It will be a pre-recorded message because it's our special Easter service uh, next weekend. So look forward to that.